equal to s plus 10 divided by s plus 4. x of t equals 2 sine 8 t moved. We need to find, so a, express the output and three partial fraction expansions you can find in the Laplace transform table without using complex numbers. Show what they are, but don't find the coefficients. So, in order to do this, I've got h of s, but I'm going to multiply h of s by what? First, this is problem three, not problem four. X of s. Oh, uh, that's not three. Oh, that's not three. Really? Yeah, if you, because problem four is this big log of the log transform, and this step is one step. Whereas, this is what I have problem three. Oh. All right, so, so what do I have to do? Get x of s. What is x of s? So that's just equal to s um, divided by one. Ah, 16 over s squared plus 64 is equal to 8. What is those numbers? It's, it's Should be. It's 8 on top divided by 2s plus 8 squared. Y2 and S squared. Is that I2 in front of the sign? Yeah, the 2 is on top. Yeah, it should be. So it's just 16 on top. Good. What's Y of S? Divided to so a s over s plus four plus b s over s squared plus a squared plus eight squared plus c eight c over s squared plus eight squared. Now. Things I'm looking for is to make sure you have all the three things down here, but also that you've got S for one for the cosine and you've got the A on the other one for the sine. That you understand that that has to have that or else the C will include, you know, it won't be the coefficient right in front of the time domain. Okay. What's the next part of this problem? Find the transient coefficient as a number, what do I need? Solve for a. Yeah, so I'm going to do what with this? Multiply by s plus 4. Multiply both sides by s plus 4, which would give me this on this side. s plus 10 <coughs> times 16 divided by what? s squared plus 8 squared. Is the transient coefficient always the one with the e to the ad terms? Only yeah, you see, in this case, these poles are on the J omega axis, so they are they're, they're not transient. They stick around. This one is to the left, so it goes away. So, also, if it's a BIBO system, the steady state should be the same poles as the input, whatever steady state portion the input has. But you already ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you do one of those, uh, what is it, the Wiley Coyote, it's two things, it's two I mean, it's an I said something. <laughs> so, this is the transient part because that's got a pole that's in the left hand corner. Okay. Anything with a pole in the left hand corner. Oh. Equals what? A times S. But all the other stuff, plus all this other junk times S plus 4. Four, so what do we make for? Or what do we make S? Negative four. Uh, isn't your A times S squared? 
Oh, that's a deputy. Oh. Okay, I'll let them go. So what do we do next? Um, plug in. Plug in? Actually, that's all there is to it. Plug it in. Yeah, one. What do we plug in? We're plugging in negative four. So what is negative four plus ten? Six, six plus six. six. What is negative four squared? So throw out your calculator and quick and tell me what that is. So we got essentially six times 16 divided by 16 plus 64. 16 plus 64 is 80? Yeah, 80. So it's 1.2. 1.2 or 0.2? Did you say 4.2? 1.2. I do not buy that. Well, six times 16, yeah, six times 16. That was 96. Steady-state AC analysis to find the time domain representation of the steady-state output. What is the steady-state output? 1.2 times e to the negative 14. Nope. That's the transient oh, that's transient. Use steady-state AC analysis to find the steady-state output. Complete shift of gears of what we have up on the board right now. To find the steady-state analysis, use the steady-state output. What are we going to do? Does that mean we can't use partial fraction? You can. Uh, well, difficult. I'm asking you to do it this other way. You would lose points if you did it that way. Okay. Yes, I would like to do it this way. Do the J omega? Yep. What is H J omega? Uh, J plus ten. Now, why did I change them over? So you don't make dumb mistakes. So I don't make dumb mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, I can. Associated here, so there's some points associated with that. And if you just put down a wrong answer, I know you make your mistakes. So it's hard to use partial credit. The more you put down, the more you can get partial credit. You're probably wise just to do it in your calculator and put it down. But look at the number and make sure it makes some kind of sense. Okay. You can see that the top magnitude is quite a bit bigger than the bottom magnitude. So you're looking for some number that's a bit bigger than one, probably in the order of 10 over 4, roughly. So around 2.5, 3%. And then uh, the bottom, let's see, the angles, the angle at the top is 45-ish, the bottom is a little more nerve. So we're looking for some angle that's a little bit negative. You know, what do you get? 1.43 at an angle of negative 24.8. Oh, okay. 1.43 at an angle of? Negative 24.8. So this is generally within what I was expecting. Right. Input is. What's the output? 
You do? Two times that. Angle? So that is the output expressed in in a what is it? In a AC, AC times so spacer notation, the magnitude and angle. You want this back into Yep. Would that be Y of J? So I want it in terms of time domain in this particular case, which would be what? steady state. Same test, previous problem. What do you do with this? 